Hi, my name is Winslet and welcome to my video on Masterpieces in Dune Spice Wars. Masterpieces are a new mechanic that you get access to if you're playing the 6th faction, House E. Kaz. Yeah, it mentions it right here in this menu, a couple chancellors affect the Masterpieces. And while I would like to talk about that more here, there are a couple more things we need to cover first. This video is sponsored by Shiro Games and was made with their support. You could say this video is an ad. Oh, and all the gameplay footage in this video was captured from a PC version of the game. If you haven't heard yet, Dune Spice Wars just came out of early access. And if you haven't played it yet, it is a very fun RTS by the creators of Northgard and a couple other great games. So I think a good place to start on masterpieces is to find how the building works on the most basic level. It is a thing, a building that interacts with a lot of different systems for the house ECAS. Once you get to, um, I think, 5k hegemony, you get gardens and they interact with masterpieces. And there's a lot of technologies that interact with masterpieces. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Basically, this is a relatively cheap building. It only costs 50 plus concrete to get one of these masterpieces up and running compared to some of these buildings that cost 150. There are a few buildings that cost the same amount, but these are like the lower tiered or easier to get buildings. The masterpiece itself will double the interactions with the village traits for that type of building. For example, this one is saying that we get plus three Solari from any military building. The masterpiece will double that interaction, giving me plus six it says plus eight here, but, but some of that is coming from my counselor here. It says each masterpiece produces two solar, solari. So even though there's nothing else in here um, for these other masterpieces, some would argue that if you wanted to just increase your, your gold income, you could use this to do that um, compared to this building. It's not quite as good as that, but it also has other interactions with other systems in the game. It is worth mentioning that there is a negative malice for deleting a, a masterpiece. You lose 10 authority and 10 Lancerad standing. And I think that comes into play more when you're trying to deny an enemy a location that's in between you. If like say I had an enemy over here in this fog of war, I could try taking a village between us and building a bunch of masterpieces so that if they did take that and they wanted to make the most out of the village, they would have to destroy those masterpieces. And while losing authority early on is a pretty big deal. I found that it becomes less of a big deal the later a game goes on and Lancerad standing becomes more important because Lancerad standing will affect um, your ability to get influence and your ability to buy Chrome shares in the mid to late game. Getting Chrome shares is how you get the economic victory, but it also can increase your military strength. So you don't really want to lock yourself out of those interactions by dropping in the Lancerad standing. So we just hop back to the menu you get when you're setting up a game so that we can look at the counselors that affect masterpieces. The second one here, he does not. He makes your military units a little bit better and so you can get a second champion. The first counselor, Sonya, they make it so that you get more gold from sanctuaries and that masterpieces are a little bit cheaper to build. I, they're not that expensive, so that's not the main selling point here. The masterpieces giving you two Solari is nice, but I feel like um, if you're building masterpieces for that interaction, there's better there's better ways to get Solari. That's more just like a, a cherry on top of something else uh, that you're getting from the masterpieces. The uh, third person here, they make it so that you can be immune to certain resolutions um, and during the Lance Red Council, but it also makes it so you get a little bit of standing for each masterpiece you build. You would have to build 10 masterpieces just to get 30 standing, which is not enough to go up a tier. You need a 100 standing to go up a tier. It might keep you from going down a tier if you're taking certain decisions that are hurting you. But I, I feel like in the long run, this isn't going to make a giant difference. Not when you like compare it to um, this one, which just makes all of your military units slightly better. 
And I think that would just carry over into other uh, parts of the game a little bit more easily than just getting a tiny little sliver of Lance Red standing. Um, and then this last one is, I think, a pretty interesting. They give you 100% of the authority that you use to capture a location back when you abandon it. So it makes sense to go take a place, build a bunch of masterpieces and abandon it, and then go take a bunch of other places, build a bunch of masterpieces and abandon it. Um, I'm not sure how viable it is. This is the counselor that I have the least amount of time playing with, but I think they could be pretty interesting, pretty different. And for that reason, we'll actually take a second to look at this last counselor in game. All right, on this map, we have two cities that each have three masterpieces on them. They are full of masterpieces, and I have the leader that gives me back the authority when I release a village, and it also gives me extra authority for each masterpiece that was in a village. I think if I release this one here, it will take me from um, plus six to plus seven it might need both of them i haven't tested it too much but the interesting thing to note about releasing other villages is that it will make the cost to get more villages less so you will end up saving a lot of authority from that mechanic from not having a lot of owned cities but i feel like you might get more authority from sanctuaries um, and then you get to also use the building slots in the villages. Right now, if I unpause here, it's not quite enough to get a whole one. It's saying 0.6 there. And then if I um, release this one, now I can get up to you know a full plus one every, I think that's every day. Um, so keep that in mind when you're considering releasing things. I, I think at this point we could start looking more at the technologies and the garden mechanic. All right, so this save is right after I achieved Dune Governorship in this game, and I wanted to show off basically how a garden resort looks in the late game and its interactions with the areas around it. It says that you get plus two knowledge for every adjacent sanctuary and plus 0.5 influence for every masterpiece in the region or around it. As you can see here, my garden, I placed in a place where I'd be able to get it around a lot of sanctuaries. You could try placing it in the middle of your territory so that it's easy to get a lot of masterpieces around it. Um, and then you could get a lot of influence for things like the uh, votes that you do to get the charters and the, the diplomatic victory. If, if that's what you wanted to do, there's a lot of things in the ECAS um, tech tree that actually interact with that like you get extra influence here you get uh, guards for using your influence um i think you can get up to three for spending 300 influence that's pretty nice it's pretty useful but i found that getting the knowledge in the mid game or the early game or you know parts of the late game is a little bit more useful because that allows you to unlock the interactions with the influence since we already have our tech tree open, let's just uh, talk about the other technologies here that relate to the masterpieces. The first one I want to discuss is artistic aspirations. This will give you 100 solari every time you build a masterpiece, and that's always useful for getting things like extra units or taking care of your upkeep. Or um, if you want chrome shares, you can use solari to go get those chrome shares and maybe get the economic victory or some of the bonuses that you get for meeting the thresholds. Um, I think it's like you get something at 10% and then 30% and then victory happens at 50%. This artistic aspirations will also make it so it's easier to build more build slots and then you can use that to get more masterpieces or if you're not really uh, pursuing that, it's still a pretty good reason to get this technology. Um, and then you also get the building inside of the capital called the Mason's Guild building, which is this one. It's a pretty good building. So I typically go for this technology even when I'm not building masterpieces. We have another one down here at the bottom, which gives you influence when you build a masterpiece. And the really nice thing about that with my playstyle is I typically have a lot of building slots open and I haven't used the masterpieces in my city when I unlock this tech that technology so i don't know maybe going for knowledge unlocking this and then building a bunch of masterpieces could 
really help with certain strategies if you're if you're using the diplomatic side of the game if you're spending influence in the council i think you'll be a pretty big fan of how this um interacts with that it also makes it so that if you have a charter people cannot uh propose a vote on it um and then the last one i wanted to talk about was native artists this says that masterpieces increase relation with sieges in the same region you also get um investment offices and the museum of unbound arts so if we go over to this siege here if i had that technology i could come in here and get some masterpieces to increase relation which could be helpful to get me to 100 but as you can see this guy's already at 100 so it's not going to make a difference on that one um and uh this guy's at 100 so you know i think that it has its place but I don't think it would make sense to get it on this map at this point. Well, I've already won, but I don't think it'd make sense to get it in the late game if um, you've already made good relations with the sieges or if they're like not in the same region as you, if they're kind of far away, you're going to have to get your relationship built up with them the, the old fashioned way by spending water and then um, putting a person on that to get the benefit. And yeah, that's everything I have for you today. I'll see you around. Have a good one.